Brad Chong. Are you still here? Ah, hello, hello. I'm sorry. The, the problem. That suddenly my computer disconnected. And then I got to restart. Oh. Uh, so, I'm there. So I have to. Uh, I have to share sound right today. Okay, can you hear me now? Oh, boleh, boleh. Yes. Boleh, boleh. Okay, good. Thing. So continue. So tadi kita tengah, you know, we are looking at the example. So I give you another example. All right. So let's consider another function. Look at another function. Hmm. All right, so let's consider example number two. Okay, so example number two. We have y equal to m of x equal to x squared plus three. Okay, suppose you have this function. Uh, you want to evaluate the integral. Uh, evaluate the integral right, uh, over the interval two to six. Okay. Uh, so essentially what you want to do is, uh, again here, uh, just uh, go through the graph. How does uh, the, this line look like? Zero, one. I have uh, 5x squared uh, plus 3. Okay, how does the curve look like generally first? You know, is it a straight line or is it what? Okay, quadratic line, how does it look like for, for this function here? Okay, okay, how does the, the line look like? U shape. Ah, U shape, okay. U shape down or U shape or U shape means uh, down. No? So we will, we'll, uh, you know, the curve will look something like a dome downward. Okay, you have a here you have a minimum, right? So it's going downward U shape. Uh, what is the intercept on the Y? Intercept will be three. No? So intercept at three will be like this. All right. So we know that the curve will look something like that. Okay. Okay, so it's between two and six. So this is two, that is six. So that is the area that we are talking about. So we are looking at the area, okay, which is the integral from uh, two to six of five x squared plus three. Okay, I will do to finish it up. Okay, do it now. Okay, finish it up. I'll give you, I want to check my internet here. <laughs> Oh, 
Ah, uh, hello? Okay, you got it? So, how, 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 what, what, what do you get? Anybody get the value? Oh. So, that will be, uh, so be equal to 5x cubed over 3 plus dx. Okay, and then we have to evaluate from 2 to say so you have to put a bracket you know for the whole for the all the terms and that will be equal to five over three six to the power of three plus three multiplied with six okay that will be the integral at six minus the integral at two so two cube over three plus three times two. So you find the value here, you find the value there, you will get uh, the, in, uh, okay, what is it here? What is the value that you get for the first uh, integral? For the integral, you got the value here? 378. 378, all right, right, value here. 19.33. Okay, 19.3. So the difference will be the area here. Okay? Now, the unit for the area, we, we go back to, the, to that. I, I was talking about the area. Okay, you remember the area? What is the unit for area? Area, you know, let's say you have area of the land, you know. Uh, here, the land is 50 meter. The width is fifty meter. So you must you to get the area. What do you do? Mm -hmm. You multiply the width with the length. All right. Now, what is the unit that you'll get when you do area? What, what is the unit? Meter squared. Ah, square meter square. squared. Okay. So the area unit is unit squared. So we know that. All right. But when you are looking at the area under the curve, you know. Well, because uh, when you do the area, you, you think of it as unit squared, but you don't actually write it. Okay, uh, but the area is unit squared. Okay, uh, because when you do application, we don't really say if it is in terms of dollars, we don't actually say dollar squared, you know? So we just maintain it as dollars, that dollars squared, okay? Uh, is still dollars. So that is the difference between application you know, and the, uh, the theoretical science, mathematics uh, concept. Okay. Now, what are the properties of the definite integral? There are a few properties which we can apply you look at 15.2, you can see that on page 800, the, the properties. So let me summarize the properties of definite integral. So we can use this property you know, when you evaluate uh, the integration. Property number one. If you have the integral of, uh, you know, integral of, 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 of a function, constant multiplied by some x, dx. So, 
what do we do? Again, here is a constant you can take it out. We should be only the function. All right, just like what we were doing earlier. Let's say you have y equal to 2x squared. You, you, you can take out the 2. Okay, so the integral will be what? The integral will be from a to b of 2x squared dx. And then what you do, you take out the 2. Okay, the 2 will just follow the integral. So you don't really worry about that concept, okay? All right, but we normally don't, don't, don't apply the rule, the rule here. When you do the integration, normally the constant, we just leave it as where it is. Okay, rule number two. Rule number two is the sum and difference rule. Sum and difference rule. If you have, uh, uh, let me see. Sum and difference rule. Okay, if I have the integral from A to B of two terms in X, two functions, F of X minus G of X, the X. So, it's just equal to the integral of the sum of the integral. This is the, the integral of the sum. So that will be equal to simply the integral from a to b of f of x dx plus the integral of g of x from a to b. Okay, so if you have two terms in x, you want to integrate from A to B, then what you are doing essentially is what? We can integrate each of the term, okay? But for this rule, for this rule sometimes, not sometimes, most of the time, actually we are doing it from the right to the left. If you have two functions, you know, two functions in X, F of X and G of X, you want to integrate each of them, all right? Now, what can we do? We can sum the function first and then integrate. Uh, that would be a better way. So sometimes, you know, the rule is working not from the left to the right. Sometimes, you know, you are given the, uh, the form on the right, you can do the integration as the form in the left. Okay, i give you an example. Something like this. So example, let's say you have integral of one to five from of five x cubed plus two x plus nine dx plus the integral of another function but over the same interval, you know, from one to five of negative four X cubed minus two X plus three D. Okay, so here we are given the form S in the right hand side. Okay, so what you can do, you can rewrite it in terms of what? In terms of the form on the left. That means you sum the functions first and then integrate. That would be what? That will be more convenient. Because if you do it here, you have to do two integration, you know, from the first function, second function. But if you sum them first and then integrate, you see, for now, you know, it's much more simpler. So if you do that, that is just add them up and then integrate. So I got 5x cubed plus 2x plus 9, okay, plus, we put like that, negative 4x cubed minus 2x plus 3. And then put the whole bracket, dx. So what you can see here, I write the form as per on the left-hand side. 
you add the function first, f of x plus g of x. You add, all right? Now, if you do this, we simplify, okay? So what do you, what, what, what do you get at the end? Okay, give me the simplified form. You know, you do the subtraction, or no, you do the addition, some of the terms you can compress, some of the terms, the term alike, you know, you can add. So what do you have at the end? It will be integral of what? X cubed. Uh, X cubed, you see? X cubed, two X and negative two X cancel out, that will be plus 12. Now you see when you do this property, we are making our life much more easier. Okay, so at the end, what you do, you integrate just a simple form, rather than doing the integration of the cubic function and you do two of them. Okay, so this rule is more practical if you are given the form on the on S per on the right, you know, you do the integration of two functions over the same interval, what you can do, you add them up first and then do the integration and that will be more helpful. Okay, all right. So this thing here actually is a very important, important rule or important property. Uh, we come up, you know, uh, many, many cases like this. So you apply that rule, our life will be easier. Okay, all right. So finish it up, I hope. Okay, so that is your homework question. Uh, finish it up. You, you know, that is the application of that rule. Okay, all right. Now, this rule is also true if you have subtraction. So this is just like a sum or difference rule. If you have subtraction, same thing, okay? The same rule will apply. So that is rule number, number two. Rule number two. Are there rules? I thought there is another rule. Okay, another rule. Okay, rule number three. Okay, rule number three is this. You are looking at two, two intervals, a to b of fx dx, and then you want to add to another integral from b to c of f of x dx. So here you can you see here the same functions. Okay, why? equal to f of x, but you have two intervals, a, b, b, c, okay? So if you look at the graph, it will look something like this. Uh, I have, oh, where is the graph? My name graph. Okay, let's say this is a, that is b, okay? And then you have another point, here, C. So that is two intervals. There are two intervals from A to B, here, and then from B to C of the same function. So when we have that, we want to integrate, all right, from A to B of f of x dx, and then we want to integrate f of x from B to C. What do we do? Okay, we can do this. You can simplify the form by applying this rule. This is equal to, all right, the integral from A to C of f of x dx. You don't have to find two integrals. Okay, here you have to find this one, and then you have to find that one, all right? Therefore, you have to do integra two integration. There will be a lot of work. So when you do the summation, all right, then you get this one, our life will be much easier. So you have the integral from A to C of the same function. But the rule is, of course, the end point of the first interval must equal the, 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 the initial point of the second interval. Okay, we cannot do it like this. If A to B, and then you have another interval, uh, C to D. If you have uh, this thing here, they are not equal, then we can't do 
because that will be, you know, separation. So the rule here is, or the additional rule, the end point here and the first point are the equal must be equal. All right, A to B, B to C. Then, uh, rather than finding the two intervals, we only find one integration. Right, okay. An example will be like this. Integral from five to 11, of okay. so let's say to eleven three x cube plus five dx plus integral from eleven to twenty of three x cube plus five. Okay, so here you see the same function, and there are two intervals. 5 to 11, 11 to 20. So what is it equal to? We can do it by applying the rule. So we integrate from the first point, 5, to the end point, 20, 3x cubed plus 5. Okay, so that will be easier. So this one, another homework question. Okay. Now, what I want you to do for this question, the examples that we have earlier, and this one, I want you to do those two things. One, I want you to evaluate the, the, the one that on the left. Evaluate this one, I call it number one. And then you evaluate also that thing, number two. And then evaluate here, number three. Okay, so do it separately. You do the individual integration, you sum it up, okay, that's one. Number two, when you make the equation as per, you sum, uh, you know, you do integral from the first point to the end point, yeah, okay, then you do it uh, directly, and you see that it's the same, all right? And also for the sum and difference rule, I would like you to also do the first integration like this, and then do with this one, okay? Individually, and then you integrate them after you add them up and see what you get. All right. All right. So that is just you know some work for for us. All right. Okay. Any question? Anything? Okay. All right. So. I have done a few examples. I'll give you a few homework questions. So go to 13.2. I would like you to do a question from 2 to 7 and to 13, and then application 54. Okay, so I'll give you a few questions. Now, those questions would be 10 to 15, uh, 10 to 5. Okay, I understand it involves a negative value. So, do from 11. So, when you see integration of some negative number, though, okay, if the interval involves negative number, negative a to b, here, Okay, we only do with the positive interval. All right, positive, negative, negative, okay. negative to our scope. So that, that's it. Okay, that's it on the definite integral. Now, the application, I would like to discuss uh, application, the question, you know. So go to question number 53. That is on the depreciation. So I want you to read that question, and then we will we will discuss that. So this is the application of a definite integral. All right? Okay. So can you read that question first for a few minutes, and then we will do it.
Okay, all right. Now, what you have, what you are given here is this. Uh, it's about depreciation. Now, you are given the rate of depreciation. You are given the rate of depreciation. That means the, the derivative of depreciation, d prime t, okay, which is equal to whatever the value is given there. Eh? All right. Now, what you want to find is I want to find d depreciation. So you are given the rate. You're given the derivative. You want to find the function. So right, the, the thing here is you do the apply, uh, you do the what the anti derivative. So I have what? I have d prime t dt integrate. I get dt plus c. So in other words, we are thinking of the idea f prime of x dx integrate, I will get f of x plus c. OK, so that is the concept. Now here, you want to do it for definite integral. OK, you want to do it for definite integral. And of course, you know that c will be canceled out, which we already discussed. But the idea is what? The idea is you are given the derivative. I want to find the function. But now it's about what? It's about definite integral. So if I put a point A, B, okay? So that means the C now will go off, okay? The C now will go off, and then you are looking at the integral, evaluating, evaluated at A to B. So that is the idea here, okay? So for question number 53, you are given the, the rate of depreciation. And then the time, okay, the time is given from zero to 20. So the, the function will be what? Will be over from t equal to zero, t equal to 20. So if you look at the question number one, use the graph to find the total depreciation. So this is relevant to the graph that we have been doing earlier, all right? So if you look at that, d prime, what kind of function do we have here? Okay, what kind of function is that? You got uh, 3,000 minus the terms in the bracket. If you break out the bracket, what, what, what kind of function do we have? Linear. Ah, it's a linear function. Okay, slope. What is the slope? Downward slope. Ah, downward slope is the negative slope. So the curve is a linear function going downward. Okay, so you can sketch the, the graph. You know, for, for us, you know, application, normally we have a linear function. And the other, the other one, you know, normally you have the quadratic function. Or, or the most thing is the cubic. But cubic normally you, you don't need to draw. You know. But linear quadratic, the first basic, the first two basic. But now we should we should just straight away be able to sketch, okay, based on the given function. So you have the d prime here. Okay, and the independent variable is t. Uh, you know that the slope is what? Is 3,000, negative 3,000. And then uh, it's negatively slope. And then what is the intercept on the d prime? Intercept on the d prime is 3,000 times multiplied by 20. That will be 60,000. So if I draw it, in terms of thousand here, I mean here thousand. So this one will be sixty. Okay, six thousand. The slope is negative three thousand. So, what is the intercept here? What is the d prime? Uh, when is the d prime is zero? What is the the time period when the d prime is zero? What what year is that? Time, time is here, okay. So the time, T is time period in here, okay, depreciation. 
is uh, in dollars. All right. Okay, D prime is dollar per year. Okay, depreciation is dollar. All right. Now, what is the intercept here? Well, for this kind of thing, you know, we need to know what, what is the intercept at D. Okay, quickly find, find it. That is the P intercept. T equals to 20. Ah, 20. Eh? Betul 20, eh? So by now, you know, everybody should be able to do it. That is 20. So you draw, draw the graph. That will be the straight line. Okay. Downward sloping, straight line, intercept at T, 20. So uh, that's why they give you 0 to 20. Because if it's more than 20, the D prime will be negative, you know, which we don't worry about. Okay. So the maximum D prime here is D. So that is the, the graph. Now, the second part, use definite integral to find the total depreciation for the first 10 years. All right? So for B, what is the interval that you, you need for the first 10 years? So what is the interval from where to where? Zero, 10. Ah, zero to 10, because it's set for 10 to the first 10 years. So we are looking at the interval from zero, okay, which I already have here, zero to 10. So that is the one that you want. Okay. So that is the area that you want for B. So for the part B, you want to find the depreciation over the first 10 years. You can use either D, you know, for depreciation, or you can use A, it doesn't matter, A for the area, right? I put both, so that, that means you can use both. Equal to what? Equal to the integral from zero to 10 of, okay? You simplify the function, I got 60,000, okay? Minus 3,000 T. So now you see the linear function. So evaluate the thing, you will get it. Okay, show the step. Okay, that is another homework question for you. Finish it out. Part B. So, okay, let me give you any more part B. So part C, I will give you part C. You evaluate the integral over the interval from zero to 20. Okay. Tambah uh, lah, sebab dia from zero to 20. So finish this up and then do one more practice. Okay, all right, any, any question? Anything? No, sir. Okay, good. So we are done with 13.2. Uh, now we move on to 13.3. Now 13.3 is area between curves. So here you have more than one curve, okay? You have more than one curve. And sometimes the curve can be a different slope. The curve can be parallel. The curve can be, you know, one, one is above the other, or the curve can have an intersection, you know? So you want to find the area between the two curves. So what you have done in 13.2, we only do area under one curve. Okay, so here it's between two curves. So based on what we have learned in 13.2, we can what? We can find area between two curves. So uh, go to 13.3. I would like you to look at the picture, the figure, 13.5, 13.15. That's a good diagram. Uh, give you the idea, okay? of the area between two curves. So if you look at the graph or the figure there, just look at uh, figure 15.15. Look at A, okay? Look at figure A, and then you look at figure B, and then you look at figure C.
Okay, all right. No, part A, you will see the, the function f of x. The interval is a to b, and then the area or the integral from a to b of f of x, the x is the area under the function now. You know, that is shaded blue. And then you move on to part B. You are given another function G of X. Uh, the area will be the area under G from A to B. That is also the area under shaded blue. Okay. Now, if you look at the two functions, you can see that F of X is higher than, or F of X is larger than G of X. F of X is above G of X. So what you can do here, you can find the area between f of x and g of x. So you want to find the area between, okay, f of x, g of x. All right. So if you look at the book, that will be the area. What? That will be the area between the two functions, a from a to b of f of x minus the area from A to B of G of X. Okay? We look at the first diagram, A, the area under F. B, you have the area under G. So what do you want? I want the area in between. So the area in between is what? If you look at the diagram C, you do the subtraction, what do I get? I get the area A. Okay, the area between F and G. So uh, if I can do it in one diagram, like this. Uh, you've, got, you've got F of X, you know, it will be something like this. And then D of X will be something, something like that. Okay, and then the integral is from A to B. I want that area, okay, which is, uh, so I want the area shaded A, all right? So what do we do? So you want the area A, okay? I don't want the area under G. I also do not want the area under F. I want the area in between. So what do we do? Okay, here, you either take the subtraction, or sometimes, you know, depending on the function, you do the addition. Okay? And then you will define the interval. Okay, so if you look at this example, how do I get that, that shaded area A? I have to find the area first under F. Oh, here, I'm sorry, I forgot the F. Okay, so make sure you don't forget the DF. So I have to find the area under F first, okay, which is the whole area under F from the, the whole area, okay, under the curve F over there. All right, so that is the area under F, call it B. Okay, so the area B is the black region. If you look at the graph, it is figure 3.15A. Okay, now I don't want area under F, I want area in between. So what do we have to do? You have to take away the area under G. Okay, so that you will have the area that we want. So take out the area under G, I shade in blue. Okay, we call it C. So here, that area here, call it C, the area B. So B minus C, you got A, all right? So that is the area in between curve. So we have to exercise, okay? You have to exercise what you have learned earlier. Either you add them up or you subtract them up. Uh, you have to look at the intervals and then we, find the area that you want. Okay, all right. Any question? Okay, this is a very simple one. Uh, let's uh, look at a few more situations. Sometimes 
we may not have uh, intervals that is as clearly defined as what you have here. So look, look at another example. Suppose I have the following situation. This is x, y, zero. I have uh, the function here f of x, and I have a function here g of x. All right, now I want to find the area here. Okay, I call it A. I want to find this area. All right, okay, I want you to look at the graph. Okay, and then uh, think, how can you find the area? Now, I'm not, we are not going to evaluate anything, okay? We, we just want to identify the interval. You want to identify the area. And then you identify the, the relevant function. And then how are you going to do it? Are you going to subtract? Are you going to add? All right? So how can you get the area A? All right, everybody. First, what do we need? Now, when you do this, it may, may not necessarily be in order, okay? In order. Uh, you just identify what do we need in order for you to find the area A. Find the intersection first. Okay, first you need to find the intersection, okay? Because the interval or the area that I want to find is from that point zero. Zero, kita tahu. But it's up to here, okay? So you have to find the interval. So in order for you to find the interval, now we call it the point B. So you need to find B. Uh, finding B is not difficult. B is where what? Where F of X is equal to G of X. So that one is easy. So now you've got the interval from zero to B. Okay. All right, next, what do we need to do? That the area is, is not the area under F. Okay, the whole area under F. And it is not the area under G. So what do we do here? Fx minus Gx. Uh, so you need to find first, okay, because there is the area between G and F, oh, no, but the area between F and G. Okay, so what do you need to know or what you want to need to find is, or intuitively, the area under F will be the whole area here, which I shade in, in, in pink, pink or red. Okay, so that is area under F. I don't want the whole area. I only want that portion, okay? So what do I have to take out? I have to take out the area under what? Under G. So I have to take out the area under G from zero to B. So the area A, okay? Number one, you have to find the interval, okay? From here, which we already do. Number two, the area A is equal to what? Area under f of x from zero to b take away the area under g of x from zero to b. So you got the area. Okay, all right. Okay, all right, next, we do a few more. I want to find the area uh, policy. 
I want to find the area from which I shape blue. Uh, that area. Okay, I want to find the whole area there from zero to C. Okay, now, what do we need to do yeah, in order for you to find the area? Uh, we call the area, call it B. I want to find the area B. Okay, look at the graph and see what are the functions involved? What do we need to do? And what are the intervals? Okay, anybody? Find interval C first. Find the interval C. Ah, ni lah Ni the point C. How how do you find the interval C? Okay, uh, you have to find the point C. Ah, point C itu dah find. Given. Okay, so C is already known. So we got that C. All right. Now what 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 is what is another point that you need to find? Okay, what is the point that you need to find? Suppose I don't give you that point here. Okay, I pick up that point. Okay, what is the point that you need to find? Point C, point C, okay lah, all right? Now, what is the other point that you need to find? Or what are the area? What is the area? How do I how I do how do I get the area from zero to C? Okay, Nur Amira. Okay, how do you get it? Nur Amira, are you here? Okay, Nur uh, Nadira. No, 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 no. Give me the g of x minus f of x. Okay, first, all right, g of x, the area of g of x minus the area f of x. Is that right or is that not right? Uh, Nick, Nick Nurul, Shapia. Betul kita betul? Yes. Yes, apa yes? <laughs> Jangan, you, ya. Yeah. No, no. Okay, anybody say that is not right? I mean, partially right, okay? Uh, is it the area under G minus the area under F? Is it not? Uh, it is not. It is area under what? The area under G, okay, it's only halfway. Not halfway lah, a part of it. Area under G is from, from zero up to here only. So what you need is of course to get the point, point B. So number one, you need to find point B. Because as you can see, after point B, it is no more area under G. It is area under what? It's, and it's a different area. Okay? So, okay, is that two? Area under what? Area under G to from where to where? Okay. Area under G X over zero to B plus uh, area under F X uh, between B to C. 
Siapa siapa cakap tu? Siapa tu? Siapa tadi? Apa nama? Aina. Aina. Ah, uh, its area from A to B. All right. And then the area, the other question is from B to C. And they involve two different functions. From A to B is area under D. Okay. And then from B to C is the area under what? So here you have to break out the two area and then we add them up. Okay. So, so here, okay. So here is the area B is equal to the integral from A to B, G of X, DX plus, okay, the area from B to C of F of X. So here, you know what is important? You have to, to identify the area that we need. That's number one, of course. And then secondly, you have to identify the interval if it is not already given. Okay, if it is given, then fine. And then number three, you have to identify what are the functions that are involved. And then you have to identify also, do we have to subtract? Do you have to add? Okay, it's either addition or subtraction. We don't multiply here, okay? Is it, you, you need to add? Or is it, you need to subtract? Okay? Uh, so, that's basically how we break out, okay? We break down the area in terms of what? In terms of the interval, in terms of the functions. And here, you know, you remember we are talking about what? We're talking about the area between curves. Okay, any question about this one? For area B? Okay, I'll give you another one. Okay, now let's say we want to find the area here. I use another color. You can do it. I don't Okay, let's say I want to find the area here. Area. Okay, I want to find the area. I need the area. Need it though. How young triangular shape? Okay, I want to find that area. I call it C. Okay, how can we find the area C? Okay, firstly, the area is, if you look at this one, uh, what, 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 what function do, do we, oh no, what, what is the interval first? Zero to B. Ah, zero, zero to, to B. B. Okay, zero to B. That means you have to find B if it is not already given now. Okay, you need to find B, all right? Okay, next, what do you need? Because I don't want to find the area under F, the whole area under F, okay? The whole, the whole area under F is simply what? The whole area under F is just equal to the integral from zero to P of F of X dx. So that is the whole area. Now that is not what we want. We want only a part of it. So how do you handle that? After you got you got B, what do we need now? Anybody? Or you can say, what area do you have to take out?
What do you have to take out? If you look at the graph. Area of GX. If you are looking at area of GX, the area of GX is only that part. Okay, area of G of X is that portion only. And we still have the gap here. Okay, that's a good idea, but it's not exact. Okay, because you still need to handle that gap. So how do you handle that gap? It is a square, sir. Ah, uh, you a have rectangle. to. Uh, you have to take out the area of that rectangle. Okay, which is bigger than the area under G. Okay, now how do you find the area, the rectangle area, the area of the rectangle? You know already. Okay, you need that Here is B. From zero to B, you know that already. Okay. How do you get the area of the rectangle? What what else do we need? Okay, 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 okay. Do what else do we need? Area of A plus B minus C. Uh, area of uh, you make your <laughs> discipline. Ibu buat susah. Ah uh, betul ke tu? Tapi susah. Sekarang ni uh, I'm asking you how do you get the area of the rectangle because you are got getting nearer. In order for you to find the area of the rectangle, what 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 do we need? There is another thing that you need. Length times width. Ah uh, you need to find the width, the height. Okay? We need this thing here. The height. Ah uh, boleh ni. Okay? Width or height. We need that thing. So how do you get that thing? How do you get that? How do how do you get it? Find the yes, equal f x. Ah, kita cari ni, okay? You cari, we call it. You find the value of g at b, okay? You get to find the value of g at b. Is that right? Because that is the the, the point, okay? So call it. You can call it a a b. We call we call it y one. Kita boleh lah, okay? G of b. You can call it y0 ke y1 ke tak kira. Okay. You call it y1. Or you can call it a constant c. Okay. It doesn't matter. Small c. The area capital C. Uh, this one, small c. So you need that height. Okay. The value of y or the value of g at b. Okay. Or the value of f. But that is the intercept. Okay. That be so then then you will get the area of the rectangle. So you take away the area of the rectangle, we got the area C. Okay, all right. Now in order for you to find the area of the rectangle in terms of integral, will be will be like this. So the area C will be area uh, the integral from zero to p of g of x to f of x. The whole okay, uh, f of x, not g of x. Uh, f of x, f of x, okay, minus the area of the rectangle. Now, the area of the rectangle in terms of integral is the integral from zero to b of y1 dx. y1 is the constant, okay, uh, because y1 is. Uh, y1 uh, is the value of y of f of x equal to y1 at where? At x equal to b. Or you can put equal to c, but I forgot. Okay? So you can put either y1 or you can put uh, the integral from 0 to b of f of x. Uh, f of x. Okay, that's wrong. I got to put the x minus the integral from 0 to B of C dx. It doesn't matter. So C is the value of the y at x equal to B. So that is the horizontal line. Okay? That is a constant function. 
So that is why, or I can say, uh, what f of x or g of x because that is really the same. So that will be the g of x equal to to g of g equal to c or g of b equal to c and equal to y one. So that is the horizontal line. So the horizontal line is still a function, you know, that is a constant function. So you get integral. Okay. So that's how you get the integral C. And the integral of a constant here, okay, is the rectangle. Why? Because it's a constant C dx integrate from zero to B. So what do I get? I got what? I got C x from zero to B. What is it equal to? C times B. So that is the area of the rectangle. So you can either do it right away, C minus multiplied by B, okay? Or we do the integration. So either you do the integral, which is consistent with the definite integral, it's a constant function, or you just subtract the area of the rectangle, which is what? Which is C times B. Okay, all right. So the, the point is, you have to identify, okay? You have to identify the interval, you identify the function, then you have to determine whether you want to add or you want to subtract. Okay, all right. So there will be a few more things that we can do from here. I will continue next class, all right? So I think I will, I will stop there. Uh, I will see you again. Okay, now, Wednesday is holiday. Butera. Uh-uh. Uh, Wednesday ni cuti. Okay. Tapi saya utang satu kelas. Remember, I owe you one class that I cancelled last time. Actually, I forgot about the class. So, rather than we will determine the meeting Saturday ke Friday night ke menatang ke apa susah nak buat. So, what I will do on Wednesday ni, I have the makeup class. So, tak payahlah saya nak makeup another day. Okay. I will do it on Wednesday. Which is the holiday. And holiday for Sarang, our COVID-19 is getting worse. So stay home. There is no difference holiday. Holiday is the Okay? So Wednesday, I will do the makeup class. I will continue from here. So don't forget. Okay? Don't forget our makeup class is Wednesday. Wednesday. This Wednesday. Okay? Uh, I don't think you are going anywhere because we are staying home. If you go anywhere, the police will get you. So just stay home. Don't be like Nilofa. Okay, Gisana Gisini. Yes, I'll just wrap up. Okay, so we talk about class on Wednesday. Do you want to talk about it? Do you want to talk about it? Do you want to talk about it? Yeah, good. Thank you. Tak payahlah saya nak buat and say another time. Okay, because we have three more weeks. Okay, three more weeks. I need the Wednesday. Okay, I need the Wednesday so that I can finish up this topic. Uh, the rest of the week, you know, we have two more weeks. So hopefully we can do the metric. You know? Uh, so we are on, on, on time. Okay, all right. Anything? Any question, any comment, anything? So do the question, all right? I will continue from here on Wednesday. Now, if I forget, if I forget, you WhatsApp, okay? WhatsApp to me, uh, suppose by tomorrow, you know, by tomorrow night, I have not scheduled the class yet to Zoom. So you remind me, okay? Uh, do you have a class on Wednesday? So that I, I remember, okay? Okay. Okay? All right. So I'll see you again. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi ta'ala wa barakatuh. Waalaikumsalam. Thank you, sir. 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 All right. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Have a nice... Have a nice... Uh, Thank you, sir. Have a nice study. Study, study, study. Okay? We are studying. Study.